the data caste system. So privacy is increasingly becoming a luxury available only for the wealthy, leading to a data caste system. And it's the data of the poorest and most vulnerable that's being used to train much of the AI that we have today. And so I'm going to describe three different categories of data, the data cast system. And I'll, I'll just use low, medium, high, I don't really have uh, like a good name for each one, sorry. <laughs> so uh, the first one I'm going to talk about, and maybe I will create one here, I'll just call it low. <laughs> um, so you're aware, okay, I'll just create a little marker here. So in the coded bias documentary, uh, they used a quote from science fiction author William Gibson. And they said, the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. We used to think that this meant that the rich would get access to new technology before the rest of us. But we've learned lately that when it comes to tracking and privacy or invasions of privacy, the exact opposite is true. Uh, Joy Bulamwini, who I've spoken out about before, showed how facial recognition was used to track people going in and out of low income housing. Um, in addition, facial recognition is used in 1500 police departments. Um, and it's trained on mugshots that police departments share with companies like Clearview AI. Uh, so for those of you who don't know uh, what Clearview AI is, uh, Clearview AI integrates is a, an AI company that integrates with the face recognition of uh, that comes from the feeds of uh, body cameras that police use uh, to quickly identify people. Uh, but the key here is that your mugshot uh, is not your property, it is the property of the police departments. Uh, and your consent is not required for them to use this data on either their own website, like a police website, or for training and artificial intelligence. And, and this is key, like privacy is not an option. It's not optional. It's not opt in. You don't have a choice for our lowest income individuals. They are often the first people to be exposed to new tracking and privacy invasive technologies. Um, and the notion in law of innocent until proven guilty generally does not apply to privacy. Uh, when you are even suspected of a crime, often the first thing that you lose is your privacy. Uh, and so I hope that's making sense. Like I hope this is sinking in. Uh, but this is an important concept about privacy is that privacy generally for the, the low income, especially if you're a suspect um, in a case, that a lot of the typical like expectations of privacy they don't really apply. And furthermore, uh, if like you're caught and then they put you in like take a mugshot of you, that's theirs. Like they, you don't have any control. You don't have any say. Uh, you can't tell them, hey, take it down, which is kind of interesting. Like maybe we should have regulation around that. <laughs> so we'll see. Now the second one, and this is very interesting. Uh, I call this middle. <laughs> uh, like middle level of privacy. I, I don't know if this is an appropriate term. Um, I don't want to like categorize anybody. I don't want to say like middle income or middle, like, you know, anything else. I just want to say like middle. <laughs> uh, so my question is, well, what do you get as an Android user? So what, what happens to your privacy as somebody who uses an Android phone? Well, um, a March 2021 Forbes article revealed how Apple's App Store required companies to um, disclose how much data is linked to your ID. So all they're doing is comparing browsers. So in this case, they're compa comparing the Chrome browser on Apple iOS to the uh, Safari browser. And, and they showed an image where there are 19 categories of uh, tracking data that is personally linked to your identity in Google Chrome, six in uh, categories in Safari and four categories in Mozilla Firefox. But in addition, uh, Trinity College researchers compared the amount of data sent by a Google Pixel uh, smartphone 
and an Apple iPhone every day. They found that Android phones sent about 20, 20 times more data or about one megabyte of data in 12 hours uh, than a Apple iPhone, a comparable Apple iPhone, which sent about 0 0.05 megabytes in 12 hours. Now, while in, even in the article, uh, Google disputes the, the number, they don't seem to be disputing the fact that they track more uh, data than their competitors. <laughs> Uh, so that's something to keep in mind <laughs> as well. So like when it comes to privacy, I mean, <laughs> like I'm not saying that uh, people don't share a lot of personal data with Apple, just that the more data that is uh, shared, like the more data that's shared is stored in the cloud um, than on your phone. So like, I hope that makes sense. It's like there are many different dimensions uh, to privacy. Uh, but this this notion of cloud versus on your phone, like is the data st stored in the cloud or is the data stored on your phone is very, very important. So it is this precisely this transfer of personal data into the cloud that increases the risks of a remote attack when your personal information is leaked and you're not aware of it. And you'll learn a little bit more about other ways that, that it can be leaked. So. The last category, uh, which I'm just going to call like high uh, privacy. I am sorry, I do not have a, uh, <laughs> I don't have a good, I don't have a good naming for each of these. Um, so, one thing I really appreciate, uh, I'm calling it high privacy. <laughs> okay, data diva Debbie Reynolds explained that since the Apple iPhone is generally considered a luxury product for most. Uh, its demographic is extremely valuable to companies. Uh, a study by the National Bureau of Economic Research found that owning a iPhone was a sixty nine was sixty nine percent predictive of having higher income. <laughs> And, and get this, it, it beat out the next best highest predictor. Can you guess what that is? What is the, what is the next best highest predictor? <laughs> uh, if you guessed, I'm going to put it in the chat. If you guessed Grey Poupon, eh, Grey Poupon, uh, apparently that was 62% predictive of high income. That was the next highest one. Okay, so basically, it's better than Grey Poupon at predicting high income um, as owning an Apple iPhone. In fact, uh, actually, this is a really important quote. Uh, the researchers went so far as to say across all years in our data, no individual brand or product is as predictive of predicting high income as owning an Apple iPhone. And this is exactly why Facebook is so pissed that crossed app tracking was disabled in the latest version of iOS. iPhone users are the ideal clients for targeted ads as they have the means and they don't mind spending a little bit more for something premium. So disabling cross app tracking is part of a much larger privacy and data strategy. Um, that Apple is using that already includes blocking cookie tracking by default. And it's not just Apple. I want to be clear, like uh, Google has Google Chrome does have plans to remove cookie tracking, um, I think in, in future versions of Chrome as well. So I just want to be clear, like a lot of these things that I'm talking about are available in both, but you, you have to be aware of like what is stored where. Is it stored in the device or is it stored in the cloud? that makes a difference in terms of the risk for, for you as a consumer.